Pooper Trooper 2000 asks, Darian, what is an example of a perfect 80s horror movie? Hmm, let me think. Okay, got it. Reanimator. Hands down, Reanimator. Uh, there's actually several I can think of, but uh, I just watched Reanimator last night, so it's pretty uh, fresh on my mind. I have a confession. There is no Pooper Trooper 2000. I made it up. I just wanted to feel important. And now I'm, I'm very ashamed. There is no Pooper Trooper 2000. Reanimator is a 1985 zombie-ish type horror film directed by Stuart Gordon. It's considered to be a classic by many people. This is, this is universally considered to be good. And it is loosely based on the works of H.P. Lovecraft. The story follows Dan, who is an average Joe with a beautiful fiance, and he's also a promising medical student uh, working under Dr. Hill in New England. Dan's world is soon turned upside down when the mysterious Herbert West arrives from Switzerland to continue his studies also under Dr. Hill. Shortly after West's arrival, he attempts to recruit Dan into assisting him in his experiments dealing with death. Dan soon finds himself torn between two worlds, Herbert West's mad science and his fiancé's hopes for a, a future family and marriage. What's uh, Reanimator got going for it? Um, a lot. It has a lot going for it. Reanimator is a good movie. The music for Reanimator, it's quite nice. It's, it's very lovely. I like the music so much that I got the soundtrack. Check it out. Courtesy of Waxworks Records. Um, this is not a sponsored video, but it can be. It can be. If it were, I would want this in return. Just an uh, FYI. Waxworks Records. This can be sponsored by you. It can be. Let me sponsor you. I want to sponsor you. Let me sponsor you. The first thing I noticed as I was watching the title sequence is how similar the music sounds to Psycho. Uh, check this out. That's pretty close. It's pretty close. Another cool thing about the music is uh, how well it helps set the tone for the movie. Reanimator actually has a bit of comedy to it, and when it's like a humorous moment on screen, the music takes on a more kind of playful tone. The best actor by far is Jeffrey Combs, playing Herbert West. His character really steals the show from everyone. Well, there's another person that's pretty good too, but they hold their own. But, but uh, Jeffrey Combs, he's the best. I just love the way he played the role with his uh, arrogance and uh, manipulative behavior. Uh, if you're watching the movie and he's not on screen, you're probably just wondering, when's he going to get back on screen? Because I didn't really care much about Dan and Megan. I, I didn't care about their, their relation. I, I didn't care about them. I cared about West. Herbert West. So the, the second standout actor to me was David Gale, who was playing Dr. Hill. I don't know what it is about his face, but when he's on screen, I just can't help but be drawn into his face. He just, he has one of those faces. I just like staring at it. And I mean that in the, the least homosexual way possible. 
Dr. Hill just has kind of a, a looming presence about him. And he, he sort of reminds me of uh, John Kerry as well. I see a little bit of a resemblance. Do you see the resemblance? And when Herbert West and Dr. Hill are on screen together, that's when the magic happens. That's the magic hour. How can you teach such drivel? These people are here to learn and you're closing their minds before they even have a chance. I think uh, the characters of Megan and Dan, they have good chemistry together. They're likable characters, but unfortunately for them, they're in the same movie as Herbert West and Herbert steals the show. He's, <laughs> I would rather watch Herbert West than Dan and Megan. Herbert West's character is far more interesting than Dan and Megan's relationship. So the, the gore effects in Reanimator have done very well. And that's probably what uh, the movie's most known for is the really good effects. The gore is over the top and uh, very fun to watch. Some of the gore is pretty intense and it's uh, not for the faint of heart. Whatever that means, I don't know. I just I hear that phrase a lot, not for the faint of heart. So I'm gonna use it, I like it. So nothing is left to the imagination. Uh, they show you pretty much everything and some may be shocked by what they show. Um, unless you've been completely desensitized to violence because you've seen about every horror movie there is, like me, almost every horror movie, I've seen a lot, or you just watch uh, regular standard television which, which has pretty much the same amount of violence in uh, horror movies now. So the gore level for Reanimator was pretty high for the time and the producers knew it. And Reanimator was never submitted for a rating by the MPAA. Like even now, it's it's, it's unrated. Um, they knew they would never be able to get an R rating without having to cut out a lot of footage. So luckily for them, they found someone that would distribute the film uh, unrated, which isn't particularly common. So, what are some of the shocking things you can see in Reanimator? I'm gonna read a list of five things. Three are in the movie, two are not. Here we go. A zombie cat attacks Dan. A 15 foot teddy bear, mo teddy bear monster comes out of the woods. Evil wooden puppets kill people for their master. Large intestines explode from a man's chest and strangle a person to death. A man gets his head decapitated with a shovel. Three of those are in the movie, two are not. You find out which are which. Some of the uh, most effective visual effects in the movie were done by simple positioning tricks of the camera. Uh, nowadays, to get the same exact effect, people would use CGI and green screens now. I'm a big fan of uh, practical effects, and if you can do it practical, that's, that's, that's always the best in my book. Reanimator Re holds up and if not exceeds what uh, horror movies are doing now today. So probably the most iconic visual from the movie and the simplest effect in the movie is the, the green reagent that Wes is using to uh, bring new life to dead tissue. They just use the stuff inside of glow sticks. I mean, that's such a simple little thing, but it looks great on film. And the story for Reanimator is written very well and quite engaging. So Dan is the main protagonist of the story, and this is really his journey, unfortunately. McCullough liked Herbert better. On one hand, Dan wants to work with Herbert West and be in on the discovery of the lifetime, but in doing so, he was sort of being betraying his morals. And on the other hand, Dan wants to marry Megan and have a family and just live a normal life. So he's just kind of torn between these two worlds. So Re Reanimator is a comedy, so it's not meant to be taken completely serious, which is good. So I can't tell you how many 80s movies out there that are that take themselves so serious and due to various reasons and limitations of the time, uh, they're just hysterical to watch now. Uh, Burial Ground's a good example of that, which I did a review of. Watch it. Did a review. Watch it out. And that movie 
that was not meant to be a comedy or funny at all. That's a serious horror movie to them. That was scary stuff. But it's not. I'll give you another example. My Little Lepus. This is a 70s movie. It's not 80s. But same thing. Same point. My Little Lepus is a movie about huge, ravenous, murdering rabbits. Do you think that translates into a terrifying movie? No, not so much. I can't believe it was ever even made. But it was. You know what? The world is a better place for it. Because it's fantastic and I love it. Probably one of my favorite movies. I'm sure that says something about me, but it's a good movie. You should check it out. So, uh, what's Reanimator got going against it? Not much. It's like one of the best horror movies ever made. So there's really not a whole lot bad to say about it. So as far as acting goes, I would say Bruce Abbott, who's playing Dan, I felt like was the least impressive. But I have to admit, his role was the most challenging and his character was the most uh, multi-dimensional. I suppose he did a good enough job, but he was just overshadowed by uh, Herbert West and Dr. Hill. So when you do your special effects, all practical, you know, some are, are bound to look better than others. Sometimes they just don't work out well, and I'm okay with that. I give anyone credit for trying to do special effects practical. You get an A for effort in my book, if you even try. Part of the charm of these old 80s movies is the cheesy special effects that look very obviously fake. So Reanimator has its fair share of effects that don't look quite real and convincing, but overall the effects are very good. And we, we, everyone gives them a pass because it's a good movie and they, they did everything right for the most part. The cat scene, for example, like in the basement, that's pretty laughable. <laughs> That's a laugh. They're not fooling anyone with that cat. But they play the scene straight, they keep going, and overall the scene works. Uh, one scene that stands out the most to me as far as like just <laughs> just a bad effect is uh, towards the end. Take, uh, take a look at this scene. Do you see anything wrong with this? Does anything stand out as not quite right? It looks like Andre the Giant is holding like a pea-sized head in front of his body. Look how wide that body is compared to that head. I mean, look at those hips. <laughs> um, this is, in my opinion, this is like the worst effect in the movie. As I understand it, this was filmed on the last day of shooting, and they just had to get the shot. I'm, I'm sure they were rushed and did the best they could. Again, I give them credit for trying, and I think it looks pretty bad, but it, at least they did something. They tried. Let's uh, take a look at Megan's character. What does she really contribute to the story? She's a pretty woman. Not the pretty woman, but a pretty woman. And she's in a horror movie. So what do you think happens? I mean, I understand why she's in the movie. She represents like the positive influences in Dan's life. It's just sad that her character really is only there just to kind of pat out Dan more and to give his character more depth. So. Let's, let's, let's play a little game. That is not a Saw reference. I don't like that movie. I like the first one, but then it kept going. And I mean, come on, guys. <laughs> I love James Wan, but so there you go. That's all right. We got James Wan from the Saw franchise, so I'm happy. It's a good day. I'm going to list five things Megan does. You tell me which one she didn't do. So which is a false statement? Megan gets naked. Megan gets molested by a decapitated head. Megan cries and acts helpless in the face of adversity. Megan becomes a zombie's object of sexual obsession. Megan rises up against adversity and saves the day. I'm not going to tell you the answer. you got to watch the movie to find out. But I think we all know which one it is. So, I've had to give Reanimator a grade. Zero to five, what would I say? I would say plus five out of five, 
And yeah, I think that's fair. It's a good movie. You should check it out. So just to show you how worthless Megan's character is. We haven't even heard him. Usually he look at this. knocks something over when I'm here. Who calls a cat like this? Rufus. 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 Come on, you fat cat. Who tries to get a cat's attention by doing that? Uh, nobody. I guess Megan does. But I'm gonna, so watch this, Megan. I'm gonna show you how to get a cat's attention. Watch and learn. Call out the name, Hitch. And do, do, do this. Not, no, that's not the way to do it. Food. Come here. Come here. I got food. Come on. Get up here. Okay, I understand that. Get up here. Hitch. Hitch. Food. Get up here. Food. Food. You're, you're going really slow for some reason. Hitch. Hitch. You're making me look bad in the camera. What are you? His head's right here. He's right here. Hit, pitch, pick your head up. What the hell, Hitch? Come on. I guess he doesn't want the food. He, do, he, he doesn't want the food, but he came. That's how you do it. So, uh, thanks for watching. I, if you like what you saw and you were entertained, you know, please take a moment to Leave a comment and subscribe if you feel moved to do so. So those things, just let me know. People are actually watching the videos and it kind of helps give me a little motivation to continue and to do more. It's fun for me, but you know, I just, I like it for me <laughs> fun for someone else too. That would be nice anyway. And um, if you have any uh, constructive criticisms, how I can improve my content, just uh, leave a, Leave a comment below. Again, thanks for watching.